Well, hello, here we are again, Father Moss and all my beloved uh, parishioners, or the ones I like, and um, uh, which is everybody, of course. Uh, <clears throat> well, let's get into it because um, uh, Cisco's got work to do, and he's um, he's he's uh, videoing this. But um, anyway, my whole overall topic is the Reformation. We talked about early Reformation, all the propaganda that came out of that, uh, and now we're talking about the consequences of the Reformation and the many many groups of uh, Christians or, or not so much Christians have come out of that as they splinter, splinter, splinter to yet newer, uh, newer uh, denominations. So, so I talked last time about uh, the, uh, the Mormons were very late. They were actually founded in the United States by uh, Joseph Smith. Um, Joseph Smith Jr. His father was Joseph as well, and um, and now we're going to talk about two uh, groups that get a lot of press, and so um, you probably would like to know a bit about them. Just a little bit about Scientology, because a lot of uh, celebrities go into Scientology, so I just like to tell you uh, what they believe and also why uh, they is excommunication from the church to belong to Scientology because it's really what we would call a false religion but big celebrities like Tom Cruise and uh, uh, who Saturday Night Fever who's that guy John Travolta John Travolta um, Cisco knows. Uh, so John Tavolta and Tom Cruise are very famous uh, Scientologists. And it's a very rich community. But Scientology, this is a belief. It was founded by Ron L. Hubbard. And he was a science fiction, kind of B-rated science fiction writer. And his famous quote was, you can make a lot more money uh, founding a religion than starting a company. And so he founded a religion called Scientology. And you can see the, where his background of science fiction comes into it because he claims that there was a planet way out in the universe somewhere that exploded and all the souls went flying out into the universe and, and many of them made it their way to, to the earth. Uh, but also, along with those are engrams, that, that, which are not healthy at all. Engrams, as in navy, and, and not M, but engrams. Uh, and when they recruit people, uh, they, they say that you're not clear, uh, you're foggy-headed, or what we call now fog, fog brain. Uh, because of these engrams and so the religion's about getting rid of the engrams and so what they did they give you a test which is rather bogus and uh, and they said well we better check you then and there's a they have a machine it's an engram machine it's actually a lie detector test machine and um, they have two uh, cans and you put your hands in the in the cans and hold on to these liquid. You don't get shock or anything. There's no, there's no heavy electricity or anything. But you know how a, a light tech detector works. It when when we tell lies, our palms sweat. We can't help it. They always do when we tell lies, and that's what the machine picks up because the you know you're attached to electrodes and and um, or whatever the currency picker uppers are um, and and that registers if you're lying or not so so if you put your hands in these cans and hold on to these uh, detectors what's going to happen to to your hands they're going to sweat and so they say sure enough you've got M grams so now the way to get rid of those so you won't be a foggy brained or a little bit crazy is that you uh, can take uh, courses and so they take the courses and that helps get rid of the engrams and uh, and the uh, courses are expensive 
uh, they, and they progressively go to more and more uh, higher level uh, courses. So you can spend two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars on tests, and that's where the, one of the ways they make a lot of money. But uh, the the longer you're in, the more you have been been through the test, and then you are asked to teach, and you get paid money, and you can use that money uh, to work your way up the the ladder. It's kind of like a a pyramid scheme in a way. So uh, what they do, uh, John Travolta is uh, was in a movie. I forget the name of the movie, but basically he he was real foggy brained and. Uh, and so then he went to to these uh, Scientology, and he kept saying, "Oh, now I see. I'm clear. That's part of the, they have specialized language. I'm clear because you're. What are you clear? You're cleared of the engrams, and so you can do uh, your your brain works better. And and you know, Tom, uh, he's he's a Catholic, and he continues to go to the Catholic Church. He says there's no there's no conflict between." Um, uh, Scientology and Catholicism, but there is, there is, because you're excommunicated, and I'll explain why. Um, uh, Tom Cruise actually is a Catholic as well, or, or was raised a Catholic, and he even went to seminary, and uh, uh, he didn't stay very long, and he's not interested in the Catholic Church at all, so he's not claiming to be a good Catholic. He's, and understand, recently he quit he quit um, the uh, Scientology as well. But those are two very successful. Uh, Tom Cruise is very successful. He's in many, many movies and all. And I'm thinking he probably thinks that getting rid of Engram, so. Uh, but the problem with it is, first of all, we don't believe in reincarnation. Uh, we believe that God creates a new soul in every person. So at conception, God then creates an individual, unique soul for everyone. That's the only last place that creation is taking place anymore. And that's why women are awesome, is that that's the one way uh, that we still get creation directly by God. And, uh, and so our souls don't come flying in this in space from another planet. Um, and also... Um, you have to do you have to give a lot of money and support this cause and this can help you be uh say you know we're not saved as catholics we believe we're saved by by jesus christ and our faith and and a connection with him not by taking instructions and getting rid of m n grams so that's what that's all about so um i'm not going to talk any more about that because uh, I just wanted you to know a little bit about what they believe, uh, but I don't think there's much danger that that you're going to become a Scientologist. And but we can we can hope and pray that those who are in it or I would say stuck in it can free themselves because it's very seductive, in that the, those classes are designed to um, seduce people into believing in them. Uh, now and uh, and uh, our Hubbard, what is it, Ron Hubbard, he, um, he is living on a yacht off the shore because he's wanted for income tax evasion. Now he's never been, he's never been uh, ruled on it, they're, they're just looking for him because he claims he is, he's tax exempt because he, he's running religion, but the government doesn't see it that way. They see it as he's running a business, so he can't come ashore, or he'll get arrested, and um, and held accountable for back taxes. And since uh, Scientology brings in millions upon millions of dollars, his taxes or back taxes are probably significant to say the least. So, but that's kind of sad too, because how would you like to live your life on a yacht, never going ashore ever, for fear that you might get picked up by the authorities? So. Uh, so I want to talk more, which is more to the point, and that is the Masons. The Masons are very active. Any community has uh, a Masonic Lodge or more than one, and they, they recruit uh, Catholics as well. And there's been a, a rumor going around 
and it has for years. I, I encountered this when I was at Yokosuka in Japan, and that uh, the rumor is that the Catholic Church has changed its mind and it's now okay to become a Mason. The church has never, every pope since it was founded in 1717, um, every pope has condemned it as, as something that Catholics are not, are, are forbidden to join uh, uh, on, on pain of being um, excommunicated from this church. And yet I know a lot of uh, Catholics and very active Catholics who are also members of the Masons. So what is that all about? Well, the Masons were founded as a secret society for men uh, in the 1700s by a group of Protestant ministers, very liberal Protestant ministers, and also non-ministers as well, members of various Protestant churches. It was founded in England, and as a result, most of the uh, active uh, Mas Masonic lodges tend to show up in uh, English-speaking countries, the United States, a uh, lot, lot of ma Masons in the United States, but also, uh, you know, Canada, Australia, and elsewhere. So um, there, there are several rides. Now it comes out of the, the guilds, the Masonic guilds. The, the Masons were the, the builders of the great cathedrals of Europe, and, and they had these secret signs, and I think that's what uh, drew these, uh, these ministers to to model themselves after. Uh, now the the the, um, the hype on it is that it's founded directly by the European cathedral builders, but that's not at all accurate. Uh, the, the builders were devout Catholics and especially had a devotion to Our Lady because the, the cathedrals for the most part were built in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Our Lady, you know, Notre Dame, it means Our Lady, of various places in France especially, and uh, they were devout Catholics. But they did have secret signals because you see all the other um, people, all the different guilds were local folks, you know, the candle makers, the, the um, you know, um, cloth weavers, all these different groups. They were all local, but the Masons weren't local because they had to go to the sites of the cathedrals to build. And the cathedrals were actually built by um, parishioners. People would go out and chop the stones out and, and put them in a hand cart or an ox cart and haul them in, over to the site where they were building. And then the Masons would instruct them to how to dress, the down, to dress down the stones uh, to build up these great cathedrals. And they, if you've ever been to Europe, they are great. Uh, they, they are awe-inspiring. They're beautiful, and they, they reach for the heavens. And interestingly, they knew their craft. They were the, they were the keepers of the compass. compass. That's why the Masonic sign is a, is a big uh, compass, you know. Uh, because they, 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 they were, it was a, a, a sacred geometry that they used. They didn't use uh, uh, yardsticks and stuff like that. They used compasses so that everything was pro uh, proportional. And as a matter of fact, they're still standing. 500 or plus years still standing as solid as ever. There are a few that have uh, kind of crumbled. And those were uh, defects at the very beginning. They started falling down pretty much as soon as they were built. But the ones that were able to stand in those years, they're still standing and they're absolutely beautiful. Um, so they needed the signs to communicate because they go to different places where different languages were. And so that's how they communicated. And they had different degrees. There were apprentices and then journeymen and then master, master uh, masons. And so uh, that's what they picked up in terms of signs for the, uh, the Masonic Lodge. So I hope I'm not confusing this too much, but um, so they decided. And so they have different degrees. In England, there are different rites. There's the York Rite and the Scottish Rite, and most of American Masons are Scottish rod, and they have these different degrees. The first ones are the the original Masonic degrees, apprentice, journeyman, 
and Master Mason, but they have all these other decrees that say, we're not very rewarding spiritually. They kept making more and more degrees. And so, and to be, and you can go to certain levels in the Masons and, and also you have to pay money in order to be granted these, uh, these degrees as well. Uh, in the United States, they have another degree. It's called um, uh, the, um, oops, oops, and I forgot. The ones that have the children's hospitals, uh, the Shriners. The Shriners, you have to be a Mason to become a Shriner. Uh, but the, Shri the Shriners were actually founded by a clown. I kid you not. He was from the circus, but he felt, uh, and they're kind of a slapstick, kind of make it fun and everything. You see the Shriners in parades everywhere. Even in uh, uh, Fairborn, uh, when I, I see the parade on TV, uh, here come the Shriners with their little tiny motorcycle, ridiculously tiny motorcycles and little little cars, honk, 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 dressed as clowns and everything. And they do that, and actually they're even more ludicrous because they tend to be very overweight men riding these little vehicles. And so I'm not going to criticize that. I put on some pounds myself. Uh, so um, uh, th that's to uh, promote uh, their hospitals, the Shriner hospitals, ch children's hospitals. Now there is a downside to that because only 10% of the money reaches the the children, but they raised the, the they raised money otherwise. You've seen their ads on TV and all to send in money for the Shriners. You know, they have all these cute little kids on there promoting it. But anyway, that's uh, that's the Shriners, and um, but you know St. Jude's. You know, almost all the money goes for the care of the children in St. Jude's. And you know, St. Jude's was founded by a comedian by the name of Danny Thomas and is now run by his daughter, Marlo Thomas. People probably know that. When I was a kid, there was a Dan, Danny Thomas show. It was a, it was a, a comedy uh, situa situation comedy show. It's very funny, it's very good. Uh, and so he made a lot of money and he started uh, the St. Jude's Hospital. So, but anyway, um, the Masons then has been, now they have, they have what they call fog bomb. Fog bomb means um, fatherhood of God, um, brotherhood of men. Fog bomb, and uh, and they all, so they, those two: the uh, uh, fatherhood of God, brotherhood of men, and immortality of the soul. So you say, well, what's wrong with that? You know, the Catholic Church believes those things. Do they believe in the fatherhood of God? The problem is, it comes out of the Enlightenment. And it's a natural religion. They don't really believe in revelation. Uh, so if you don't believe in revelation, then pretty much Jesus is optional. Uh, the Trinity is optional. The Holy Spirit is optional. So it's kind of a lopsided Christianity in a way. Uh, but so that's one thing uh, that salvation for example you have to do a lot of good deeds again it, there's a, a heresy in the church called um uh, pelagianism and pelagian is that you do good do, deeds to save your soul and we we cannot save ourselves it's jesus christ just said so it's really a, really a confused religion and it is a religion even though they call it just a lodge it is religion, and um, but that's not the only objection. They take oaths. We're not supposed to take oaths except for serious reasons. Just when you go to court and say, "I promise to," on the Bible, "I promise to tell the truth, nothing but the truth." So help me God. That's an oath, or actually an oath when we get married. I promise to be true to you in good times and bad, in sickness and health. That's that's an oath. Uh, but they they take oaths over kind of silly things, but with serious consequences, because part of the they use signals. So this signal is if I ever tell a secret of the Masons, I will go like this and have my throat cut, 
my um, and then down the uh, torso of the body and I'll be disemboweled if I ever tell any of the secrets. So that, you know, we're not supposed to go around threatening to be killed if we tell a secret. And besides, it's not worth it. The secrets are really silly, you know? And we know what they all are because the Masons are not good at keeping a secret. So they, so they tell. And, um, but anyway, uh, they have done a lot of damages. They consider the Catholic Church uh, regressive and the enemy. And so they've done a lot against the Catholic, especially what they call the Oriental Rite in France and following the, uh, the revolution, you know, there was a reign of terror and uh, priests were killed by the thousands and churches were burnt and so forth. Um, in Italy, you know, Garibaldi, who established the Republic of, of Italy, uh, he was a Mason persecuted the Catholic Church, and so forth. And in the United States, for example, they help each other, even if it's dishonest. If you go up against, a, a, like you're on a jury, and a, a Mason's been accused of a crime, you have to acquit that person. Even if you know he's a criminal, you still have to acquit him. With the exception, I think it's murder and um, treason. Those two crimes, they can't, they can't pull pull them out of the cold, out of the cold. So, so, um, but they'll even lie. So here, you know, a person goes to court, promises they're going to tell the truth. They don't tell the truth, and and they've already taken this false uh, oath in in the lodge. So the this, the eighth chapter, thou, no, thou shalt not bear false witnesses. That's mortal sins. Two mortal sins right away in a row. And um, so in the United States, uh, pretty bad. Um, uh, surprisingly, one of the biggest, main, uh, most, many, many, if not most of our presidents have been Masons. What they do is they recruit them when they find out they've been, uh, uh, you know, in office, voted into office. Uh, but one of the most famous and popular presidents was FDR. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, he was a big time Mason, and he put Masons on the Supreme Court that used Mas Masonic rules instead of the Constitution to make judgments. And one of the most famous is um, Hugo Black, Justice Hugo, Hugo Black, who had been on the court in, in uh, Oregon and had found ways to make it illegal for Catholics to have Catholic schools. And it's only recently that you could have a Catholic school in Oregon. Oregon. So, um, so he did everything he could to discourage the development and, and the sustaining of the Catholic faith. And when he got on the court, more of the same. Now, he was also racist because he was a member of the Ku Klux Klan. And the Masons in the uh, Klan or were in cahoots in a lot of things in our history. And um, so they had a lot of influence in terms of um, uh, the Know Nothings, which were anti-Catholics, uh, burning down churches and murdering priests and nuns and so forth. Uh, uh, also, you know, the uh, I, I mentioned last time the, the Mormons, uh, Joseph Smith was a, was a, a Mason and when he founded his church, all the rituals of the Mormon church are actually Mason rituals as well. Uh, and so how am I doing? Am I running out of time? Okay, so, um, so probably one of the worst things they did is both the Klansmen and the Masons raised millions of dollars to send to Mexico uh, during the See, oh, the presidents of Mexico from day one were all Masons and they hated the Catholic Church and, and were wanting to destroy it completely because they felt that the church was an enemy and also it was holding them back. Uh, the, the president, Fertarco uh, Calles, uh, greatly admired the French Revolution. He wanted the same thing to, uh, to happen after the revolution in Mexico. 
uh, a revolution from Spain, um, liberation from Spain. But he wanted then to turn society into um, the same thing that France was, anti-Catholic. And so um, it was horrible, bloody uh, consequences that priests were killed. Um, most of them were, were murdered. Uh, the, you, no one was allowed to go to church. They were, you could even be arrested for having wine because they made a possession of a bottled wine or any kind of uh, alcoholic beverages illegal because they were afraid that the priests would get a hold of wine and use it for, for the masses, and at which they were right. That's what they did. So, um, so uh, and you, you've heard of the Cristero Wars, uh, you know, and our, the Saint uh, Jose, uh, uh, Del Rio, is it uh, Gonzalez Del Rio, who is uh, a teenage, teenager saint who defied the, the government and was tortured and then murdered by them. He was only about 14, 13 or 14 years of age. So he's been recently made a saint uh, by uh, Pope Francis. So, um, so they established an army called the Cristeros, Vivo Cristo Rey, they used to shout. And they didn't actually um, defeat the government, but they sure slowed them down. And as a result, uh, Catholicism is still pretty strong in Mexico because, see, what happens when you persecute a church? It just makes it stronger. And, uh, and so, in, in many ways, Mexicans, uh, Catholics, are a, a lot more devout than, than, not all of them, of course. We have a lot of devout uh, American Catholics, too. But of course, a, a boost to that is um, Our Lady of Guadalupe. And of course, that was the banner that the Cristeros carried in, some, in, in, in their wars against the soldiers of Mexico. So you can see that, um, the popes from from the 1700s until the present day have all written letters and encyclicals uh, condemning uh, the the joining of the the Masons, and also if they've joined the Masons and known to be Masons publicly, they have to actually renounce their membership publicly, their 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 membership publicly. They can't just privately say I, I don't belong to that anymore. They have to let people know in a public way that they are out of the, the Masons because it's a scandal. And uh, so one last story before I stop, and that was one at Shikoska. Um, the Masons had gotten themselves into uh, promotion boards and so forth. And um, so a lot of folks, especially enlisted, be joined the Masons as they increased their chances to get promoted. And um, so what has your kosher? And most of those people were Filipino, almost all of them. And, uh, and oddly, they were the very best of Catholics. They were in the choirs, they're the ones that provided for everything, supported the church, very devout, showed up for every mass, even daily masses. So as is very common with uh, Filipino people, um, very good Catholics, but in the Masons. So, uh, the Knights of Columbus, which we had a, a council at Yokosuka, Japan, said, you, Father, you have to excommunicate these Filipino people who have joined the Masons. I said, I'm not going to start a war, you know. And uh, they said, but, but, you know, they're excommunicated. You have to. So I, I said, I know what I'll do. I'll email um, Archbishop Brolio and ask his opinion. And he said, don't start a war. <laughs> he says, yeah, yeah, just tell them privately, one, one at a time, that they should, should get out of the Masons. I, I did tell them, none of them did. <laughs> so, but they were mostly my friends too, so it made it tough. Uh, but, but my email that I got from the Archbishop, I showed to the Knights of Columbus, who uh, then uh, said, don't blame me. The boss says, don't start trouble. So I did. Because down at Sassable, 
they had done that and there was a terrible scandal of a fight with uh, uh, those people who had joined the Masons and and, and the, then the Masons got involved in it too. And so then they were claiming the Catholic Church's prejudice against them. So I said, I'm out of this. I'm just little old me. I don't need the Masons and everybody else beating up on me. If the bishop had said they have to go, then I would have done it then. Because I am kind of gutsy too, so I would do it. So that's my story and I'm sticking by it. I hope they found some of this interesting and uh, it will be uploaded in the near future. All done. Thank you for listening. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.